In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Our Lady, Mother of the Word Incarnate, Saint Joseph, our patron saints and guardian angels, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Today, in beginning with December 17th, as you know, it becomes more pronounced the anticipation and kind of the excitement and the liturgy builds in preparation for the coming of the Lord on Christmas. And we begin these days with the famous and ancient O Antiphons, those Gregorian chants that are antiphons which have so much a kind of a, a sighing and a, a, a longing because they begin with the letter O. And it's like the, the whole of creation is just sighing for the coming of the Lord to come uh, as human nature and all of creation was awaiting the Redeemer. Especially, though, mankind because of the original sin. So we hear in the first reading some of the typology of the uh, coming of the Messiah, that he's going to be of the tribe of Judah, the lion of the tribe of Judah. He's going to devour, you might say, the enemies of, of God, like the lion, you know, seeks out his prey and, and crushes them. And uh, that uh, the, the, he will be springing out upon his enemies like the, a lion crouched in hiding. So we, and, the, and that's where we get the, the lion, of course, has been seen even from the time of the biblical days as kind of like the king of the animals because it's a typology of showing our Lord as king and um, of the tribe of Judah especially. <clears throat> Judah being the least would become the most important because of from the tr tribe of Judah will come the Messiah as we see in the genealogy today that is always read um, during Advent and then on Christmas Eve the gospel will be read again. This gospel according to Matthew traces uh, our Lord's genealogy back to Abraham, the father, our father in faith who Abraham was looking forward to from the beginning, you know, when he made this covenant, when God made a covenant with Abraham, <clears throat> the covenant was based on <clears throat> Abraham having faith in the promised Redeemer, the promised one. That's where Abraham was made righteous, that he believed that God would send a Redeemer. As he went to sacrifice his son Isaac and God stopped him through the angel and and at that point, you know, God saw that Abraham was willing to sacrifice his own son at God's command. But Abraham realized, too, that God was also uh, going to establish a redeemer and send one that his son was only a type of and that God would send his son to offer his life for his people. And all these people mentioned here in the Old Testament were considered to be, you know, people who were part of the covenant that was passed on, faithful ones who, you know, remembered and, and some were not so faithful because they, they um, weren't the best, maybe, example, but they still passed on this genealogy. They passed on this, this connection and this human... Uh, line of descendants so that our Lord would be seen to be truly one of us. And Pope Leo the Great points out in his reading today, it's important, the genealogy, that it traces our Lord back to, in Matthew, to Abraham, our father in faith, and then in the other genealogy of Luke, all the way back to, to Adam himself, to show that, as he said, that the first Adam and the second Adam, Christ, namely, share in the same human nature. If they don't, 
then we're not redeemed. We're still in our sins. God had to come and join divinity to humanity or there could not be a redemption. He said, as Pope Leo points out, that if it was just this visage, this image, you know, this projecting this image of kind of a human nature as God did in the Old Testament on times when he spoke to man or when he had the hospitality of Abraham, <clears throat> that if he only had this appearance of human nature, mankind could not be redeemed. So he had to take on a human nature and be born of the Virgin Mary. And that it's uh, very important that, uh, um, <clears throat> that it doesn't say that, um, that Joseph was the, the father of our Lord. He says, Jacob, the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary, of her was born Jesus, who is called the Christ, to show that only that Joseph had legal fatherhood, but he was not the actual father of the Redeemer. So that we see in the genealogy, there's very important information given to us, and especially to a Jew whom Matthew was writing to. This would tell them very much about Christ and his, his messianic character, pointing out that he is the one that they have been waiting for. The 14 generations that so nicely fit into Abraham's are into Matthew's genealogy, as we know, um, St. Bernardine of Siena, I believe it was, points out that he's 14 generations, that our Lord comes from 14 kings, 14 rulers, and 14 patriarchs, and that it shows that he is truly the fulfillment of all those things. He's the f promised one of the patriarchs, he is the king of kings, and he is truly the one who is the Lord of Lords. Let us, as we prepare for Christmas, only a week, uh, Christmas Eve, a week from today, you know, continue to prepare ourselves and to, to open our hearts more by denying ourselves the things of this world and, and to really uh, prepare to receive our Lord uh, in a greater way in our lives this Christmas season that's coming. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.